Perfect. Let's get started. It's uh, 2.05 in, in my talk. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of a boutique, uh, sorry, of a new age consulting firm, Consolidon. Uh, Consolidon is new age in the sense that we get uh, boutiques from all over the world to collaborate to build one larger consulting firm. Um, we collaborated with about 70 of these boutique consulting firms uh, to put up this summit called the Connected Insights Web Summit. This is seven days of webinars and panel discussions and workshops. Uh, so that we can pass on insights from the boutique consulting firms in our ecosystem to uh, the, the people listening, the participants like yourself. Uh, today, we have with us uh, Munir uh, and Joanna, who are going to present very, a very, very interesting topic, uh, dropshipping. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, to their presentation. Uh, just a couple of quick housekeeping points. One is there will be a few giveaways in the chat. Do look out for those. Uh, could be some interesting giveaways for you. Uh, and the second thing is, please feel free to interact, switch on your videos, ask questions, both during and after the, uh, after the presentation. Um, because the idea here is to come and exchange ideas, discuss thoughts, et cetera, rather than just sort of passing knowledge, uh, rather than making the one way thing. Uh, so that's about it from me. I'm going to hand over to Munir to uh, take things forward. Looking forward. Okay, thank you, Varun. Uh, hi, everyone. Okay, so uh, I am Munir from uh, the owner of Tajiz Group. We are a marketing consultancy company uh, based in Lebanon. So we will go through... Uh, this uh, topic, which we found it interesting to, to put on the table for, uh, especially at this time, uh, after the COVID, the pandemic uh, that happened uh, late uh, 2019. And it's still, uh, the impact of it is still uh, up to date, uh, hopefully to, to fight this, uh, this uh, uh, virus or uh, the, the, to, to solve this pandemic and to return back to the normal life. So we found this is a, an interesting topic to, to go through. And uh, we, will, we will just um, like be uh, moving into what happened through the pandemic and uh, how the marketing consultancy is important at this stage. And how did the social media uh, make the, the impact on the dropshipping uh, sector? So uh, we will start. Just one second. OK. So, uh, uh, during the pandemic, when, when the pandemic started in uh, late 2019, uh, more than half of the global workforce were, was working remotely, even uh, after the, the serious situation, uh, mainly some countries had 100% of uh, lockdowns. So, this, uh, this way of... Uh, of work has been introduced uh, in a large scale, okay, after the, the pandemic happened. So it basically um, it, uh, like um, created a new market, which is the online market for doing business, okay? It's not new as much as it's, it's trending after the, the pandemic. So we can see in this graph, uh, the major uh, crisis that happened throughout the years. Okay, we have in the 97, the currency crisis, we have the dot-com crash in the 2000, early 2000s. We have the global financial crisis that happened in 2008. And we are now into the new crisis after 10 uh, years almost, which is the COVID-19 crisis. So, you know, in, in every crisis, we always have uh, the good and the bad thing. 
the good thing is that there is a new uh, potential markets uh, growing after during the pandemic and after the pandemic happened. Uh, so here we see like the okay we see the drop down uh, the downside of economic uh, global economy uh, in 2019 onwards to 2020 and to uh, into this year okay so in um, in 2020 most businesses has shifted from brick and mortar to the online uh, uh, business uh, this shift needs a structure so the company and uh, first thing to do was the enhancing digital transformation has to come from the top so they put the idea of uh, going into this direction to go into this direction, they needed more into the technology to add the technology and to to have the know-how uh, on how to use this technology to be part of this market and how uh, how they will promote their business that they have been promoting for years uh, face to face and now they have to take it into the online uh, market. So uh, after after having this technology and the know-how for this, they go and they go into consolidation of the data. They turn uh, as many customer interaction into a network of data uh, to facilitate the strategy development de uh, derived from first party data. So if I have a list of comp of uh, clients that were working with with our business uh, while we were in a brick and, brick and mortar. Uh, when I shifted, when we shift our business online, we have to uh, reconsider how we will communicate with this data. Uh, first, this is not the shape they know the business. They know the business in a different shape. So, so moving into the online market is uh, showing a new, um, <clears throat> and we can say showing a new shape of, of, of the business uh, other than the one that was before. So after this, the consumer versus business needs, they, you will find a lot of gaps while moving from the traditional uh, brick and mortar into the online market. Okay, so the difference between what the consumer market wants and what analog businesses actually deliver must be eliminated. And the last, uh, the last uh, part will be to be collaborative in ecosystems. Companies need to be a part of a collaborative ecosystem to make partnerships and to have industry innovations so that they will be in this new shape, which will, uh, will show them on the online uh, market. Uh, please, if uh, anyone has any question while, uh, while I'm going through, I'm ready to, 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 to take questions. And we will have at the end uh, a 20, 15 uh, minutes of uh, a Q and A's. Okay, one second. Okay. So uh, according to McKinsey, the rate at which business has have adopted emerging technology has been sped up by years due to the pandemic. So some companies already planning to shift to flexible work uh, spaces after positive experience with remote work uh, during the pandemic. If a move that will reduce the overall space they need and bring fewer workers into office each day. So th there, there is a reduce of office space by 30%. Okay, so knowing knowing this fact is for 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 uh, for me at least I see this is an advantage. Uh, because if, if uh, companies are reducing their workspace, this means they are uh, still planning to sell more, but still there are places where we can include our services to help them sell more, okay? Uh, so uh, here we, we say we start assessing uh, the current digital marketing setup and redesign the marketing strategies according to that. So defining the future goals give you an edge over your competitors. So whoever moved first, 
he took the part in this new market. Whoever took the decision first was part of the key players in this new market. So here, here we see the, the, the experience of remote working can lead to an inefficiency and reduced cohesion. So here we see that we companies in this uh, phase, they do need the support. They no, do need the, the consultancy. <clears throat> so we will go into, into what is marketing. I just want to check the, sorry, one second. Uh, okay, sorry, Kanika, just one uh, question, uh, if you can support me with technically, uh, how I can see the, the table of, uh, of participants? Can you see them now? It's on, on the right, ah, but okay. when you're sharing screen, it's difficult to see it. Yeah, it's difficult to see. Anyway, I will continue uh, using the slide. Okay, so in, uh, <clears throat> in marketing, usually marketing refers to activities a company undertakes to promote the buying or selling of a product or service. So marketing includes the advertising, the selling, delivering products to consumer or other businesses. The main seven functions of marketing is the product management, the pricing, the distribution, promotion, financing, marketing information, management, and selling. So when I think of moving from one market to another market, which is the brick and mortar and the online market, uh, basically we think of studying all these seven aspects, okay? We uh, do the study for the product management, how we will manage this product when we were uh, selling offline, we were managing it uh, in, a, in a special way. While going to the online, it should be managed in, okay, a similar way of direction, but it should match with the online. The same thing goes for the other uh, functions to be studied one at a time and how this will affect from this shift to this shift. So some also another way some marketing is done by affiliates on behalf of a company. Uh, and this is, for me, this, this is the highlight of, of uh, the drop shipping. So when I'm moving from one place to another, I will need the support, okay? Uh, who, will, who will help me to, to sell uh, what I have? Who will help me to, uh, to be part of the new market? Uh, I'm reducing my cost, but I need to sell more. So here is a, a big door that is opened for, uh, for new people to benefit also from my business and to increase my sales. So here we can see there is a mutual benefit in this cycle. Also marketing is the activity set of institutions and processes. So without processes, we will not have a proper marketing. We, we should have the processes to create and communicate and deliver and exchange the offerings <clears throat> that have value for customers and clients. Uh, these processes, if I have the processes while I was uh, working offline, uh, I have to develop these processes to, to be um, uh, beneficial uh, in my online strategy, okay? Okay, so we go into, like, I will go back. Okay, so here is the seven functions of marketing in general. When we talk in digital marketing, it's much, it's, it's more, um, it has more details. We have to look into more details. We have to look into, uh, into these functions that will benefit from the digital marketing. So when we talk about digital marketing, it is the promotion of physical or digital product through online using internet and different electronic devices. So uh, what digital marketing did throughout the years, it enabled companies to speak directly to consumers by, by hinging on places or apps where people are likely to present or spending more time. 
So now if I'm going from my offline to the online, uh, to the online platforms, I'm being exposed to more uh, potential. I'm being exposed to more people who might be interested in my uh, product. So to, to have this uh, potential and to convince them, we have to go back to the seven functions and to integrate them with the digital marketing strategies, which will be defining your goals and objective to create buyer persona, to uh, make a proper competitive research, to define your target market, and to, to go into the budget, how much I will be spending on how much I will be getting back to that search, uh, the SEO, which is very important to be part of this uh, huge market, uh, to use the social media uh, to be uh, closer to our customers, to, to tell them what we do, to explain to them what we do, and to show them our product and convince them on, on how to sell, to, to, to buy our products. We also to go into ad campaigns, to do the remarketing, the email marketing and the content marketing, and at the end to do the measure. Okay, the measure is very important because it's the, the analytics help us to move forward, help us to, <clears throat> in case we did wrong, to see our mistakes and to correct them and move forward. Uh, a lot of uh, businesses, they look into their sales measures, but the digital marketing uh, measures should always be there. The analytics should be always revised. Uh, as much as you are doing well in your social media or in your uh, overall digital strategy, digital marketing strategies, uh, as much as more as you will be uh, closer to your customers, uh, having more potential, and closing more deals for your products or services. <clears throat> so basically the digital marketing helps businesses, uh, helps businesses to achieve their aim and to be closer to their uh, customers. Okay, so uh, moving from Moving fr from brick and mortar to the online, as we said, this is the, the main uh, structuring. This is the advantage that happened in the, uh, in the pandemic. Uh, these are the main seven functions of marketing. This is the digital marketing strategy that we should take, uh, that, should, that sh we should be aware of. And to do so, to shift from our uh, brick and mortar, okay, business. Uh, just to define, the business is the activity of making one's living or making money by producing or buying and selling, okay? So uh, selling products such as goods and services. And the retail business is sell items or services to customer for their consumption, use or pleasure. So these are the facts of business and the retail business. Okay, these, this is a, the, the main definition. So how I want to, to turn this definition to translate it to be sold online. How I will be uh, making one's living or making money by producing or buying and selling products online. Uh, how I will, um, how I will uh, sell items or services to, com to customers for their consumption, use, or pleasure. So this shift is moving from the brick and mortar into the online where it will be a seamless, uh, uh, secured, uh, uh, easy to, 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 to be part, to, to be closer to the consumer. Okay, so this, this is the shift where it will happen from a brick and mortar into the online by studying all and, and of course, uh, taking into consideration all the above details which we went through, <clears throat> which are the digital marketing strategy, the seven functions of marketing and the main structure of the uh, shifting. Okay, so, 
any any questions so far okay okay so now this is this is the main shift that's happening uh, for us we always see that a third party is always important to be involved in any transition uh, especially in our uh, uh, time now where the COVID has been suddenly exposed on 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 the global economy and uh, and uh, it affected a lot of offline businesses and it made a lot of offline businesses to take the decision to enter the online market and to be uh, on the on this online market uh, we saw a lot of um, of businesses that shifted from the offline to the online but it didn't get any uh, results as it should uh, it should have uh, or uh, like um, if we have an offline business or a marketing department okay some businesses they sell a lot they have good markets they have uh, uh, good uh, reputation they were selling fine when the covid happened uh, the system that that any company was working on uh, like it stopped or or it it was it was a change the way the people uh, started to think after the COVID or during the COVID has totally changed and most of the people were were online uh, okay one second uh, okay let's go back to, to this point so um, transfer the transmission from uh, the brick and mortar to the online uh, is always suggested to to have the third party where they will think outside of the box to make this transition you have to think outside of the box because eventually you are going from the, the box that you 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 used to work in or the processes that you had for your business where you are going into a totally new market where you have a, a lot of more uh, exposure a lot of more uh, potential in this market so a third party will help you or support your business to hit the the targets that that you want to to uh, uh, to target okay so no questions so far <clears throat> Okay. So what uh, what uh, to do in this transmission uh, period? Okay. So uh, first of all, you have to change the communication that you you do. Uh, businesses before COVID, they they depended on the face to face. They depended on meetings, on traveling, on um, uh, direct meetings. But after the COVID, since like more than six months, the uh, flight, uh, like the traveling, uh, has been has been slowed, and a lot of people couldn't uh, go from one country to another, even in the same countries. So that that the the type of of the communication um, had to change. When I talk with someone. Um, uh, on the phone or through a post or through an ad, uh, it's totally different than talking to someone who is visiting my shop, who is standing in front of me. So st sticking to the same business strategy and targets will not work for your marketing after COVID. Uh, you must optimize your strategy according to the situation. You need to redesign your social media content. Even if you were on social media before the COVID, uh, and you had a communication plan. After the COVID, your communication plan should be changed. Uh, you're not talking to a normal market anymore. You are talking on a demanding market. Okay. Before the COVID, it was a social media platforms where where a lot of people know that if 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 we go and do the marketing, we will get this result. 
But now, uh, all the people who were doing their shopping or their um, transactions to buy goods or services, they were they were, uh, in the offline market, shifted to the online market. So first you have a bigger uh, market or bigger uh, demand in this uh, in this new time after the COVID, which will will uh, will not be the same communication that you used to be uh, that you used to to do before the uh, before the COVID, and take a fresh approach towards your customers. Focus on the ones who have been with you all this time. Uh, if I'm if I was selling something uh, in my store, and I want I want to sell it now online. Uh, first of all, I will look for my existing or the, the previous clients who used to take from me, who used to buy the service or product from me, and to see how I can um, target them through the online to bring them back to me to tell them that we are aware of, of this shift and we are with you in this new market. We, are, we understand you, why you are in this new market and the other market has been uh, stopped or uh, dropped down. Uh, anyway. Okay, and you should monitor your campaigns, marketing strategies, given the volatile market. So, uh, this brings and leads with offers, pitching and customers, some exclusive promotions and offer can be a great way to bring them back. Uh, you can promote them on social media platforms and send emails too. So whenever you uh, look into this new market, the online market, you always uh, send what you have. Like I have a new, we go back to, to we go back to this, to the digital marketing strategies. So if you're doing this study and you're doing your homework well, you will have a lot of things to tell your clients. You have a lot of um, information to educate the, the, the customers in, in this new market. You, ha you, you have a lot of um, things to tell them of how your service and product is adapting in this in new uh, market and that you are there and ready to serve your customers <clears throat> as you were before. So uh, what to do is to invest in paid advertising and pick the right social media channels. Okay. Uh, it helps you to showcase your products and services in the form of visual and textual advertisement. So first you have to find the platform widely used by your audience. Uh, we will reach to this slide to go through the, the different platforms and how to think into each platform, if it, it will support your business, it will not support it. Some platforms for some businesses are not as good as uh, it serves. Um, some are for services, some are for uh, more into goods. So we will go through this uh, on a later uh, slide. Uh, direct most of the of your PPC budget on that platform. Come up with a compelling and creative strategies. Uh, during the pandemic and after, creativity played a big role uh, uh, in this transition uh, between the offline and the online. Uh, it's it's always good to find someone who can translate your <clears throat> processes and the way you, you changed your uh, uh, strategy between the offline and the online to always be creative, okay? To always let the people, let, let your customers understand your, uh, your message, maybe from a simple sentence or uh, a visual and create engaging content generally engaging content is so appealing and interesting that it immediately grabs the attention okay so working on your content to translate this service or product in the online uh, is very important uh, you have <clears throat> sorry uh, you have to um, always look in into the plan for your future plans 
and to know that this content that you are putting now, where it will take you, it will take you to your next step, it will take you to the, to the coming five years, it will take you to the coming 10 years. Uh, it's not just about putting a post on, on the social platforms. Uh, people are following, uh, customers are following your business. They want to know what they are buying. They want to trust your brand. They want to trust your uh, services or goods. So the content is really important. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so we will talk a little bit about the e-commerce. The e-commerce is a form of doing business that is performed online or over the internet. In other words, when you buy or sell something online or via an ele electronic medium, it is referred to as electronic commerce. So any uh, service or uh, product that is being sold online is under the e-commerce uh, uh, naming. Because of its vast reach and popularity, it has completely changed the way entrepreneurs do business and has been adopted by everyone from small businesses to the big giants. Even if some people today after the COVID or even after the COVID they started the e-commerce, it doesn't mean that they are succeeding or they are doing their uh, job well. Because we know the offline business has been there for years. So if I was selling at a $50 million turnover per year and the, the COVID and I started the e-commerce uh, in addition to my offline business, I started to sell online. It doesn't mean that I will start doing the 50 million turnover per year from the e-commerce because you have to build, to build in this uh, market. You have to build your brand. You have to build your uh, presence. You have to uh, translate all your um, your products and services so that people will will understand them in the online marketing. <clears throat> By 2017, the e-commerce industry had grown to over $2.3 trillion. By 2021, it has reached to $5 uh, trillion, which is a big, a big, uh, which is a big number. Uh, it's almost a double in three years. And uh, it's uh, and it's uh, expected to to be more in the 2020 onwards. Uh, and here we can see this graph. Even though we go back to this graph, even though we have a uh, downside, okay, in 2020, we come to see that no, the e-commerce business uh, instead is increasing. Uh, and is uh, uh, developing more and more, okay? So this is the history of e-commerce. The first, it started by, by just delivering a mailing uh, from, uh, uh, to be, uh, yani the first major US e-commerce company, CompuServe is founded. CompuServe is a mailing company. So they started in the 1969, uh, they started this uh, e-commerce process by delivering mails. And then it went year by year until the 1990 where the first web browser, World Wide Web uh, launches. Uh, in five years, uh, Amazon and eBay launched, which Amazon today is one of the biggest marketplaces. So this was 25 years ago, okay? Uh, Amazon had a vision 25 years ago and they, they, they already accomplished their, uh, uh, and even more, and you now they are looking for more. But uh, it took them this time, this, this time to be the dominant in marketplaces where, where they are, uh, now they, they work globally. In 97, Netflix, which is the entertainment. In uh, 98, the solution of uh, payment and uh, security, PayPal has launched. Uh, Instacart launches online food, food ordering and delivery. Uh, we can see that year by year, uh, the e-commerce is coming more uh, complicated and uh, specific, okay? 
like every type of business now can be uh, in the e-commerce using many tools and uh, <clears throat> many tools and uh, strategies. Okay. <clears throat> so to, to, to go from brick and mortar to online, as we mentioned before, and due to these uh, points that we, we went through, uh, during the COVID-19, a lot of people lost their jobs. They, they, uh, they tried to, to do something new. Uh, some businesses tried to, to increase their, uh, uh, their income, increase their uh, sales. <clears throat> so the drop, drop shipping basically is uh, when the customer places an order from your online store and then your store will forward this uh, uh, transaction to the main supplier and the main supplier will do the direct shipping to the customer. So due to this uh, increase of demand in the online marketing, we can see today that drop shipping also is increasing. Why it's, it's increasing? Because the demand is increasing and the supplier, he already planned to reduce the office space by 30%. For example, so the um, reducing the office spaces uh, had gave give a new new people to to enter this uh, sales process or the marketing process. So if any dropshipper today wants to come to 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 sell any product, he doesn't have to produce. Uh, their uh, service produce their product. They can market the product for the main supplier to reach the customer, okay? So uh, here we can see that the supplier, if uh, he doesn't have the processes uh, worked out and uh, adapted and developed to match the online marketing, they cannot get any dropshipper to do their uh, to support their business because it will be vo very hard for the dropshipper to sell the service or the product without any developed processes. The quick and easy access made e-commerce the preferred way of doing business today. The e-commerce market is expected to be nearly five trillion. <clears throat> so basically, dropshipping is a supply chain model in which a dropshipper can directly ship one product to, uh, from wholesalers warehouse to the customer's house without handling logistics and management. This let uh, dropshippers focus on the actual business aspect of their business growth and scalability. These dropshippers earn commission by selling products of suppliers for a markup, earning handsome commission. So the dropshipping model dramatically lowers the barriers for entry, making it easy for anybody to start grow and build their own profitable dropshipping store. This is a very important, uh, let's say affiliates or the dropshipper for any supplier, even if it's a business or if it's a product, it's good to, to be prepared as a business to let any dropshipper can sell my service and product. When I reach this level, I know that a lot of people are looking to, to do this dropshipping process. So why I will not be part of this, uh, why I will not be part as a supplier of this uh, cycle, let's say. So here we see that it's very important for businesses to be ready for uh, entering this online market alone or with the affiliates and the dropshippers. So first we have to find, to, to, to have, to be a dropshipper or to do the dropshipping process, you have to find a great product to sell. So this comes out from research, from uh, knowing the demand, seeing uh, where is the demand, knowing my platforms, seeing where, uh, where are the platforms that have uh, a higher uh, uh, demand for the product that I'm looking to sell. When I do this research, I can know what product I can sell and where. And then I will have to go and find a supplier for that product. Uh, in this case, 
especially uh, during the COVID and after. <clears throat> uh, if I want to do the drop shipping and I go to find suppliers and the supplier is not ready to be uh, to, to sell his products or services online, then I will I will not be able to get the supplier to do to do this service for him. That's why uh, the business should be ready so that they can immediately can give me their collaterals immediately. They can share their uh, services, their uh, uh, their products, their product details, the processes they, they work with, so that I can know where to go and sell, okay? Uh, third thing, you have to choose a marketplace to sell your product. Always you have to look where, as I said in the beginning, where is the demand, uh, mix and match, do a proper research. Market your products on social media to attract traffic. Okay, I went and I opened my marketplace. I have to do some traffic to, to this marketplace and I have to go into the social media uh, platforms to tell people what I'm doing, uh, to tell people, uh, the customers, to tell them that I have your, uh, your supply, you have uh, the potential to buy this, why they should trust you. And all of this comes from uh, the, the way that the supplier is ready, the way that the supplier is, is uh, seeing his, uh, his online market, and that's how you can support as the dropshipper. Okay, any questions? No? Okay, we will continue with uh, our next slide. Okay, so we went through why why we are doing this, uh, why dropshipping is increasing, what is e-commerce marketing uh, uh, strategy, digital marketing strategies. Uh, all of this has to be introduced to the customers and has to be uh, communicated to the customers who are in the online uh, market. There are many um, platforms that uh, today we can benefit from and each pl platform translate our communication in a way, in a way that the customer uh, enjoys, this is first, understands, like some people, they will buy when you give them a, at least 60 seconds video, just explain to me. Or other people, they, they, they like to uh, hear what other people uh, talk about your product. So each uh, platform on, on the social media has its own uh, direction and community uh that the, the people or, or the potential in this community they understand your communication in a way okay so we go through these the demographics of each platform is very important the purpose as i said is very important what is it is it is best for okay like i'm doing a i'm doing the pro, i did all the, the above things I did the structure, I did the processes, I, I'm ready to, to be part of this online uh, market where I should go, okay? The demographics, I have to know the, the platforms, the purpose of each platform, where it, it's best for, okay? Like for example, in YouTube, it's a brand awareness and service industry. <laughs> if I want to go into Instagram, it's lead generation, retail, art, food, entertainment, and beauty businesses, okay? And then we go to the downside, which is uh, for Facebook, it's limited reach. For Twitter, it's 140 characters. So each platform give you, the, uh, give you a different way on how to communicate your, uh, uh, your brand or service to the potential customers. So, um, in this, in this uh, planning for this, where to go on what uh, social media platforms, this is very critical because if you did all, all the work that you did before, 
and you didn't study the platforms well and you didn't adapt with each platform, okay, the communication plan will be ready, but you have to ad make it to, to, adapt, to adapt with the uh, platform that you are uh, promoting on, okay? Any question till, till now? I'm almost, uh, I'm almost uh, done. We still have the last slide. <clears throat> Okay, so what digital marketing, marketing consultancy, this is the third party that, uh, that uh, I mentioned before in, in the previous slide. Uh, if I, I want to move to, to the online business or the online market, uh, it's always better to, to hire a marketing consultant. Why, why is this? Because uh, my, if, if I'm a business owner, and I understand my business in a certain way, okay, which is the offline. Uh, to take it online first, my first objective should be to increase my sales, to increase my brand awareness, to inc everything will be to increase. So to do this, I have to get a third party who will um, not guide me as much as it will be um, consulting me on what I had in, the, in my previous years of business and what I should be doing in the coming, uh, in the coming years to, to be part of this uh, online market, okay? So first, let the third party be involved in your operation to understand your company culture. Uh, most businesses, they, 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 they are afraid of business consultants or marketing consultants to be um, involved in their operation. But uh, I always see that this is a must because eventually this is what you are selling, okay? Uh, any business, they sell their operation. They sell the way they do their product from uh, industry. They sell the way they do, the, they operate to um, get uh, a service at the end of the day. So eventually what, what you are selling is the operation. What you are taking online is your operation, your company culture, uh, from where this product is coming, okay? A marketing consultant should know your product or service to guide your company where to go and find the demand your company needs. So enable to take you to the right place, enable for, for any marketing consultant to take you to the right place or to put you on the right platform or to, uh, to write your processes and uh, make your communication adapt with the online, uh, with the online market. They, they, uh, they should know your product or service from where it came, how it started, all these details. The marketing department and companies work on putting things together and targeting the service or product into different channels to increase sales, where marketing consultants develop and guide you into new opportunities. If I'm a marketing consultant, I will not think of uh, how, to, uh, uh, how to internally uh, make your operation work. I will look on, into the operation that, that is producing the service or the product. And I will see how to communicate this to the online marketing. I will see uh, how to develop this, um, how to develop uh, uh, this process to be, to adapt with the online, how to guide this uh, process to, to be part of this online marketing on these platforms, on these social media platforms. <clears throat> Uh, and also to have a new input for a new shift gives a difference in increasing your sales. I think this is what I said. Okay, so I think this is all what I have uh, to say. We still have time. Uh, Kanika? Yes. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, please go ahead and unmute yourself and you can ask. Oh, 
So any questions uh, related to this topic, related to any, any business that has a question that we might support with any case study that can be discussed. Uh, hi, Munir. Uh, this is Rakesh. I have one yeah, question. Hi, Rakesh. Uh, uh, what is your uh, activity in this? Are you a marketing consultant uh, who enables move from a brick and mortar to a digital platform? Yes. Uh, our company is a business and marketing consultant. We support businesses in um, in this transition, uh, we found uh, in the COVID there is a lot of need for this. Uh, knowing that we were doing this before COVID, but in the COVID, uh, after the COVID, we ran into this uh, market because we we knew that uh, businesses need this uh, support. Uh, running businesses before the COVID, COVID they needed this support to stay on the track to keep uh, things moving in their uh, business so this is what we are doing now um, and of course it includes uh, the training it includes the digital marketing the uh, business consultancy it includes the metrics for uh, the employees for the operate operation uh, we have we have the programs uh, that are metrics that uh, that can uh, identify your uh, employees how they think. We have the HBDI. I don't know if uh, most of you are aware of this. It's the HBDI uh, instrument. It uh, it measures how the person think with the four quadrants in, in the brain if he is emotional, logical, whatever. And we have another program, which is also a metric, uh, which is the, called the Belbin uh, program. Uh, it's an advanced training course, which also it measures the personality of the employees. So this is helping uh, when we do this metric because we, we, are, we can know uh, like the shift of the company from, from the offline to the online. Uh, if their team can handle it or not. If, uh, of course, all teams can handle it, but uh, sometimes you will have, um, people will take it more emotional. So we go to the uh, people who, who think emotionally and we try to give them a soft skills training course to adapt in this new market, etc. So, yeah. Thank you. Also, we see a lot of uh, food delivery business uh, picking up in the region now. Most of the, uh, there are a lot of uh, online service providers for uh, delivery of food to, from restaurants to customers like Talabat and uh, similar. I think most of them move from the brick and mortar to online the way you explained it. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. And also they, they supported, uh, yeah, they were, they were the, the support of this uh, transmission for, for restaurants and uh, uh, and the way their, the businesses were. And uh, like, for example, uh, throughout the COVID, a lot of restaurants went off uh, business, but they still uh, managed because of these uh, apps, because of these solutions. So there is always a demand for any business and any service uh, to, be, um, to be accomplished through the online uh, platforms. Okay. The online Thank you, Marie. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any, any question? Uh, Mone, I just want to ask some questions. Would you advise an individual to pick up a dropshipping business or must it be an organization? Okay, I didn't hear the first two words. Would I advise for what? 
I said, would you uh, advise or encourage an individual to go into a dropshipping business or must the person uh, be a part of an organization to be able to do that? Um, of course, any person or, or a group or uh, organization can do this. If the individual, he understand the product and he can do uh, the management of uh, taking this product from uh, to into the online market. Definitely, I encourage anyone who can at least make it a side hustle because this is a money generating uh, process that only needs needs from the dropshipper to follow the processes. If the supplier is ready to to be on in, in this online uh, uh, market. Like for example, uh, Alibaba uh, takes most of, uh, if I want to be access, a successful dropshipper, I will go to the gold suppliers. I will sell, I will do dropshipping for a trustworthy product or service. Uh, I will not start with something that are uh, not ready to be sold on, uh, uh, on the online market. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay, any other question? Hi. I would like to know uh, what are the major risk factors involved with drop shipping? Um Okay, there are many many risk factors. Uh, mainly, they they if you if you want to start, you start with the product, uh, the shipping of the product, the delivery of the product, the demand of the product, uh, the shelf life of the product. You have to study all of these aspects uh, to make a to make a successful uh, transaction. Uh, for sure, you need a secured uh, payment uh, method. This is very important and uh, should be looking uh, look uh, into. Uh, I think I think there are many risk risk factors, but mainly the product is 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 one of the main and the payment. In between, we have a lot. If maybe by by uh, next uh, season we will do something for the uh, risk factors because i always believe if you study your risk you will you will succeed if you uh, know what you will be facing you will succeed so of course next next time we will we will talk about this more okay sure thank you okay Any uh, any more questions? No. Okay. If there are no more questions, uh, maybe we can conclude for today. Um, thank you so much, Munir, for the presentation and for sharing your insights. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining and, you know, uh, asking and participating. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, maybe, Munir, if you can share your uh, email in the chat, maybe they can reach out to you. Um, or if you have your sure. contact details already on the screen. Yeah. And uh, also on... Uh on the page on your panelist and on your uh, website. I website, think, uh, yes. You can definitely ask. get access to the website. And Munir has also uh, put his email on the chat if you want to take note of that. Um, again, thank you everybody for joining and hope you have a great day and weekend. Sure, thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Kanika. Thank you, Varun. And uh, hopefully we, for next uh, time, uh, we will do something. Uh, which is also better than this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.